All right, hi class. I hope uh, you all are doing well. Um, today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to graph proportional relationships. And we're going to, so here's our three objectives for today. We're going to use graphs to recognize proportional relationships, or proportionality, I should say. We're going to identify a constant of proportionality by a graph, and we're going to interpret a point on a graph of a proportional relationship. So proportional means um, for every value that changes, the other value changes at the same rate. And we can modify this, or we can model this, is what I'm meaning to say, as y equals kx, where k is that constant of proportionality. Okay? So what I would like you to do for this part, um, go ahead and pause the video and try to answer part A, B, and C on your own, and then, um, then you can follow along after you've done that. All right, so now that you've done this, uh, the graph shows the time it takes JC to print t-shirts for, for her school's math club. So we're going to plot these points here, the points on the graph to complete the table. Are the quantities proportional? So that is what we're trying to answer. So let's plot these points first. So x, when x is 1, the number of t-shirts is 1, we can see that it takes her 5 minutes. And when x is 2, right here, it can be 10 minutes. When it is 3, and you don't have to draw these arrows here, I'm just doing that so you can see where they're at. This is 15. If I was in class, I would just be pointing so you could follow along. And when x is 4, we can see that time is 20, okay? So start at 1, 5. As you move from one point to the next on the graph, how does the x-coordinate change? How does the y-coordinate change? So how is this x-coordinate changing? Well, we can see that each time it's going up by 1. And the y-coordinate, each time, we can see that it is going up by 5. So write the points for 0 t-shirts and 5 t-shirts as an ordered pair. And we're going to graph this. So we'll do this here. For 0 t-shirts, that's going to be 0. How long would it take to make 0 t-shirts or to sell 0 t-shirts? Well. 0 minutes. So that would be 0, comma 0. And I've plotted that up here at the origin, 0, 0. And for 5 t-shirts, we can see that our ordered pair would be 5 because our x-coordinate is 5. If it is 5, most likely we could see, actually we know, that it will be 25 minutes. Okay, And we can see here that this is forming a straight line. Trying to get this on all the points. Oh, come on. Blink, 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 blink. Ah. Why won't I do that? Now I'm just annoyed. There we go. All right. So. Um, let me see. So we graph the points and draw a line that passes through all six points. So we can see that it passes through all six points. So um, what I would like you to add is if, here we can do that up here, or actually at the start of the chapter in your vocab, if the line is so, actually no, let's just do it right here. If it is a straight line, if your graph is a line, and passes through 0, 0, then it is proportional. Proportional. OK, so we can see that it is going through the origin and it is creating a straight line. So we know that it is proportional. All right, so let's go ahead and look at example one. Um, you might have trouble seeing this in the handout. This is 10 minutes. 
This is 20 minutes and this is 30 minutes. And that's how many calories she burned. So Tanya exercised for 30 minutes. She noted that the calories burned at the three times during her workout. How can Tanya use the information to find how many calories she burned after 15 minutes of exercise? So we need to, um, we need to draw a graph here. So first of all, let's draw our, draw our X and Y coordinates. And we need to identify what our X values are and our Y values are. Um, time will be our X axis. Usually time is the X. Usually time is X, okay? Now for over here, we saw that time was not our X coordinate, okay? But most of the time, pun intended, it is our X values. So our X axis will be time and our Y axis will be calories. And then we need to decide how many units we're gonna go by. So I'm gonna go by 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 25. I was hesitant because I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit, and 30. And by the number of calories that we're gonna go up by, um, let's go up by, should we say like every two, go up by 50. So we'll say this is 50, 100, 200. So we're going up, oops, we're going up by 25 each time. So this would be 150, 175, no, 200, 250, and 300. Okay, so we're gonna plot these points. 10, 95, so this would be 10, 95. So we're plotting these points at 10, 95 is about right here. And then 20, 190, so we're at 20. And we go up to 190, which would be just under 200, so it'd be about right here. And 30, comma, 285. 285 would be above 175, so about right here. Okay, so we've graphed it. Um, how can Tanya use this information to find how many calories she burned after 15 minutes of exercise? So we can draw a line through these points. Oh my. See if this will work better. It won't do it. This is when, yeah. One more time. I'm gonna just zoom in real close. All right, I'll just try to draw a straight line. All right, so you should be using your ruler for this. So we can see that at 15 minutes, it's about 150, 145. So how can Tanya use this information to find how many calories she burned after 15 minutes? So we can see that it's about um, 145 calories in 15 minutes, okay? Now, we can see that our equation y equals kx, because the problem with the graph is it's an estimation. So let's look at our equation y equals kx and find out what k is. K is equal to y over x. So k is equal to, since it's proportional, it's going through the origin, we can just use this point 10 comma 95. So 95 over 10 is 9.5. So our equation is y equals 9.5x. 
So times 15, y equals 9.5 times 15, which is equal to, and you can use your calculator for this, 15 times 9.5 gives us 142.5 calories. So this is the exact value. This is what we found using the graph. So the problem with using a graph is it's a little, not as accurate, right? But it gives us a good estimation, so how we can graph the proportional relationship. And we're going to spend a lot more time on how to do this. And this is more of what we do in pre-algebra, pre but I thought I would show that to some of us. All right, so let's look at the triad. Uh, each one-fourth serving of cereal has three grams of protein. How can you use the graph at the right to determine whether the quantities are proportional and find how many grams of protein are in one cup of cereal? So one-fourth of a cup is three grams. So one-fourth of a cup is three grams. So one-half of a cup means it just keeps going up, so that would be six. So one half would be six. And three fourths would be nine. So one cup would be 12. We're just going up by three each time, and 12 sends us off the graph, okay? So how many cups are, or how many grams are in one cup? 12 grams. Okay, another way that we can do this is we can see that X and Y, where it's one fourth is three, then we have one half, which was six, and then three fourths, we're just going up by one fourth each time. So if we go up by one fourth again, that gives us one, this goes up, we're, oops, we're going up by three each time. So this would be 12, okay? All right, last page, and then um, we'll get going. So the graph shows a proportional relationship between the distance and the amount of time Mr. Brown drives. So part A, what does each point represent in this situation? So I'm just gonna talk about this. There's no calculations that are involved. So it's asking us what's happening at this point here. Well, at this point, zero, zero, it's telling us that he's covered zero miles and he's only driven for zero hours. So at zero, zero, nothing's happened. At one comma 55 tells us that 155, he's driven for one hour and he's covered a distance of 55 miles. Two, or excuse me, five comma 270, uh, 275 means at five hours, he's up here. He's covered a distance of 75 miles, okay? What is the constant of proportionality? So that's asking us constant of proportionality. That's our K value. So in this case, it is just one. Uh, find the Y coordinate when X is uh, excuse me, find the y coordinate when x is 1. It's just going to be, so when x is 1, what is y? It's 55. So k is equal to 55. Or it's 55 over 1, which is just 55. What equation relates the distance y and the time x? So our equation is y equals kx. k is 55, so y equals 55x, that is our equation. So suppose the graph of Mr. Brown's road trip is extended. Find the ordered pair of the x coordinate of seven. So if the graph is extended, it will pass through the point seven comma what? Well, seven is that value here. So we just take y equals 55 times seven. So y equals 55 times seven. And that gives us 385. So it would be 385. This means that Mr. Dr Brown drives 385 miles. In how many hours? Seven hours. Okay? 
Our last bit, we are going to recognize graphs of proportional relationships. So explain why each graph does or does not show a proportional relationship. So this first one, number one, is proportional. Proportional because it is a straight line and passes through the origin, zero, zero, okay? Oops. Uh, the second one is not proportional. Why is it not proportional? Because it doesn't pass through the origin. And this last one, number three, is it proportional? No, not proportional because it is not a straight line okay so draw two graphs that pass through two comma three one that represents a proportional relationship and one that does not labial graph is proportional or not proportional so what i would like you to do is go ahead and do this on your own and then i will check check this next time we're in class or better yet compare your graphs with your classmate next class and check with your partner. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, have a great day. Bye.